In 2018, I got to experience fishing in the central coast of British Columbia for the very first time at Coastal Springs Float Lodge. It was a pretty unreal trip, being able to stay at the float lodge in a very secluded area and catching big Chinook salmon. This is a trip of a lifetime for anyone who likes to fish, so we're pretty spoiled. In 2020, we came back to the night inlet and lodge on the Camry showed us even more what the area has to offer besides fishing. In September 2022, I had the opportunity to return to the lodge once again. And this time, I brought along my good friends Shane and Jason, who have never had any remote saltwater fishing experiences. So I was even more excited for them than being there myself. It's not far in the water there. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you again, yeah. Been two years. Yeah. Just Well, it feels like uh, we were just here yesterday, but it's been two years. It has. Uh, it welcome has. back to Night Inlet up, up in Central Coast, BC. Uh, we're fishing with Cam Reed from Coastal Springs Fort Lodge once again, and uh, very excited to be back. Besides wetting our lines very briefly during our first evening, we decided to keep prawning a try. Now, even though Night Inlet has a very good abundance of large sport prawns, it's never a guarantee just like fishing. So the anticipation of waiting for the traps to come up from the deep, it's always very exciting. some raw prawns? I'll try it. I never had raw prawns. Really? You never tried yeah. it? Really? No. You've been missing out. Really? I think so. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh man. <laughs> I have to go for more. Well, we <laughs> That's pretty good. Up. Our main target species for this trip was cold salmon. In September, as we're nearing the end of the season, they can be quite big, often over 10 pounds. The fishing for us, however, was quite challenging on the first couple of days with lots of juvenile Chinook salmon being caught. Although this may seem like a nuisance, but it's so wonderful to see that many of them around this only means one thing, the juvenile survival has been great and the fishing should be excellent in the years to come. At one point while we were fishing, a big part of Pacific white-sided dolphins went by the area and we got treated by a spectacular show. Although we're having a tough time finding our target species, other guests were having pretty good success on catching the prize target, which are the big Chinook salmon in the area. Coastal Springs Flow Lodge only accommodates up to eight guests at a time, so it's a pretty cozy little lodge where you can truly leave your busy life behind and relax for a few days. 
what I look forward to every day besides the fishing is coming back to the lodge and enjoying those meals by our chef Wendy while sharing stories with other guests. So this morning we putting fishing aside for a little bit and we're gonna do some I guess bear hunting. But not with a gun. Right? Um, this area is just famous for its grizzly bear population, do you mention? Yeah, yeah, certainly. Yeah. And uh, we made our this is our first stop, which is seeing watching a little black bear up. So how old do you think that one is? Uh, that guy's probably four years old, just oh, a oh, sub really? okay. uh, sub adult that's just been kicked out by mom. Oh okay. Yeah. Just foraging on the beach. So that's what they do in these areas, right? They yeah, yeah, in these areas here. Uh, this is an estuary, but it looks like this guy's uh, just digging for clams or else looking for crabs right mm. now. Yeah, waiting for some coho to show up in this stream. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you reckon those grizzly bears? I mean, there's grizzlies around this area. Too. Uh, yeah, certainly. Basically, yeah. every estuary around here will have a little bit of a grizzly population yeah. attached to it, some much uh, more densely populated than others. Uh, if you have a pink bearing stream, you'll definitely have grizzlies with it. Oh, okay. This one's basically just coho that come up here, though, so it's, it's a little more sparse as far as a bear population. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. So uh, oftentimes you'll see them just waiting down here, sort of in uh, late late July, waiting for pinks and uh, coho to show up. Okay. And uh, that's just after they're done working on the berries. And then they'll show up in the estuary, they'll work down here for a little while, for a couple of weeks, and then they just kind of slowly follow the fish up the river mm -hmm. as, they, uh, as they progress right. towards their, uh, their spawning grounds. So being early September now, uh, there'll be a few of them that are going to be a little higher up depending on run timings, but uh, I think we'll have a pretty good chance of seeing quite a few down at the beach still. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. On the final day of our trip, the weather calmed down and allowed us to venture up the night inlet where we had the chance to catch big cold salmon, as well as seeing some pretty rare wildlife and stunning landscapes that most people would never get to see. So this bear viewing business is pretty big. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, it's been the uh, building for the last 20 years or so that started with just a couple of lodges around yeah. and a couple of day trip places but now there's a, a lot of operators to the point where it's getting a little <laughs> saturated and a little yeah. much now but uh but yeah no it's uh it's big business for yeah. sure but at the same time i mean ecotourism that's that's very sustainable very yeah no, you know, uh, it's, it's great to bring people absolutely. out here and much like fishing yeah. a lot of the operators are the ones that are facilitating a lot of the research that gets done mm -hmm. yeah so it really is a net positive for sure. Great. Certainly in the way that we do it around here, uh, it is very, very low impact. And because it's so remote, you know, we can really mm -hmm. only sustain so many people. So, you know, we're lucky because we fish, so we see bears quite often. Um, but most of these people are coming from Europe and, and they pretty much never get to see bears, yeah. right? This is really exciting for them. Night Inlet is a huge body of water. As you travel further up, the inlet becomes narrower and the mountains becomes bigger, making you feel incredibly tiny. So this is Glacier Bay. This is where we used to tie up in May and we would uh, chase uh, feeder springs around here so this is yeah just my favorite place in the world with a three finger peak and glacier peak there it's a pretty incredible spot
For this particular trip, I really wanted to capture Jason fighting a cold salmon in the most stunning setting. So at times I would get off the boat so they could troll around while I flew the drone to achieve those shots. Most of the time, the shots never worked out, but while we're up the inlet, I finally got the shots I wanted. Real? Flasher comes out, it's gonna slacken off just to try and pick up that slack really quick. There's got two guys following them too. Yeah. Fish right up here. What do we got? Coho or spring. Say coho or spring on that. Oh, no, no, he's just you're good. You're good. Yeah, the death roll. Rolled all the way up to the flasher just about. Flashing four. Come on, Blake. There we go. Beautiful. Excellent. Nice one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Good job. Excellent work. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we know there's at least two other ones. Yeah. I'll do the two-hander. There you go. Yes. <laughs> they always make fun of me when I don't have a fish worthy yeah. of two hands. So I can't one-hand this one, Shane. Well, this is pretty heavy fish. Oh, that worked out pretty perfect. Well, that was yet another excellent visit to the Central Coast British Columbia's night inlet. You probably have noticed in this episode, I didn't focus a whole lot on the fishing part of the trip, simply because there's such a huge diversity of activities to do in the area. From watching playful dolphins in the ocean, to foraging grizzly bears on land, to venturing up the night inlet to look at huge landscapes. Um, as a nature photography enthusiast, this is simply a Biggest playground ever, I could spend hours at each location if I had the time. The season for Coastal Springs Float Lodge runs from mid-June until early September. And because the lodge is located at the mouth of Night Inlet and very close to Vancouver Island, you have lots of different fishing opportunities throughout the season when you visit. You can venture up the Night Inlet to target some of the big Chinook salmon running back to the tributaries in the area. Or you can make your way across to Vancouver Island to intercept some of the different salmon species running down Georgia Strait like you've seen in some of our previous episodes. I hope you have enjoyed this episode like I enjoyed this trip back in September. I was so happy with the shots that I got, especially watching Jason catching this big cold salmon near the end after seeing foraging grizzly bears and the biggest mountains right by the sea. There's absolutely no complaints. If you need more information on Coastal Springs Float Lodge, make sure you click on the website in the description to go check it out. And thank you for watching everyone. Thank you for your support. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for more videos to come. If you have any other questions regarding this trip, uh, make sure you leave a comment on the bottom as well. I'm happy to answer your questions. And until next time, good luck fishing.